UK knife making has blossomed over the last 10 years. With a new national convention called the Sharp Show, I was not only blessed with patronage, but my son Mitchell was able to attend as a cameraman. Here was an opportunity to not simply showcase the work of the makers or suppliers, but as far as we could, we worked to capture their journeys, their love of the craft, and the friendships born as they share their knowledge within this brotherhood of steel. For those who could not attend, or those who enjoyed this gathering, this will show my experience of this memorable day, where collectors and makers met up with old friends, or finally shake hands with your favorite artisan. This was the chance to see the incredible talent in the flesh, and complete that experience of buying a custom knife from its creator. So, October 2022, welcome to the Sharp Show in the UK, just south of Coventry. So, meeting up with Steve Nowacki. Hello, brother. Hello, Good to see you. And uh, you want to tell the camera on your knife courses and what you make? So, we've been doing the, the knife courses now for oh, maybe four years. Yeah. Um, one and two day courses, basic bladesmithing on the one day and a chef's knife on a two day. Yeah. It turned out to be very popular. Only ever have a maximum of two people on any course, so they fill up very quickly. A lot of father sons, I'm saying. Yes, yeah. yes, that's that's quite um, that's quite popular. Uh, you know, so yeah, dad and lads, uh, they're always good days. Dad and lad course, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's um, it's a practical thing to make, yeah. and people can take them away, especially with the chef's knives, and they can use them in the kitchen. Yeah. So you know, a functional piece of art you've made and that's with the cord wrap handle on which is it so again on the cord wrap on, on the one day yeah we'll have just a cord wrap but on the two day it's a hidden tang so a choice of any specialist hardwoods that i've got and i've got quite a lot so Fantastic. yeah there's a there's a, a plethora of options that yeah. we can use you know so anybody who's uh, looking to a one or a two day course Hit you up. I'll put your link in beneath. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a look on, yeah, have a look on the link. I appreciate that. Fantastic. Or straight to the website, and the course dates are on the website. They're nearly booked up now to the end of the year. So okay, so that's good. It's a good present for Christmas, then. Definitely, it? definitely okay. a good Fantastic. present. Fantastic. Yeah. Cheers, Steve. Good Cheers. to meet you. Take care, mate. Right, look Cheers. after yourself. Along with the skilled makers and the dedicated suppliers, who saw steel, leather, bolts, abrasive and machines, and then there are the exotic hardwoods as well. So I'll introduce to Henry Lee, and he does stabilised woods. Mm -hmm. Let Henry explain what he does, and uh, mm. so what you do, mate. Yeah. So I obviously run Blockworks UK. Yeah. So I'm primarily importing and then processing of exotic hardwoods and also some natives. So I buy from small sawmills all around the world, right. primarily focused on quality rather than quantity. Import them and then process them. Um, so that will involve milling them down to smaller pieces from larger bits right. and stabilising. So with my stabilizing, yeah. um, it's submerging them in a thin methacrylate ester-based resin, which then with vacuum and pressure incorporated into it, will force that resin into the wood. Right. Once, yeah. Yeah, then once that's cured, we'll give you a much stronger, more moisture resistant piece of wood. So the wood that arrives to you, is it pre-seasoned or do you then have to put it away? To, it you, varies. You have to take your tester on it. Yeah, so I use a moisture meter, just right. a cheap one from Amazon. Cheap ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, some stuff I get that's really wet, and other stuff is all ready to go. Yeah. Um, what I've managed to find, if I have the, a crate of the same wood, mm -hmm. I can weigh the whole crate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then plot a graph as we're going. Yeah. And when it's leveled out for about mm -hmm. a week, yeah. to me that's good enough. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, wonderful. I mean, if you've got anything it's got like a ironwood, desert ironwood. I do have some desert ironwood. Yeah. Uh, it's here. Yeah, close some. In a second. Yeah, this is some desert ironwood there. Yeah. Um, I will have some other pieces dotted yeah. about. But now this stuff machines like acrylic, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Wonderful stuff. It'll kill your belts, but yeah. you know it comes up really yeah. nicely. Um, African blackwood. They make clarinets. African oh. blackwood. It smells like a dead shed, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's yeah. horrible. Yeah, fantastic. So oh, yeah. I'll leave you a link on the. Mm, underneath yeah. in the Cheers. description yeah. and anybody who obviously wants to head up for some stabilized wood in the UK or overseas mm. yeah head up Henry yeah. thank you cool cheers well then mate so very fortunate to meet Graham how do you do from uh, near me in the west country he's going to explain to you 
what he makes, the services he offers, and I'll just let this male guru talk for what he's doing. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, okay. Brian. Yeah, well, as you said, I'm Graham Clark, Clark Knives, and I'm a metallurgist by profession. I've been a metallurgist for nearly 60 years now, um, so it's, it's get, getting a bit long in the tooth. Um, but yeah, the, the main things we do is we, we run one and two day knife making courses, yep. we run a two day axe making course, um, the, that's right, they're, they're, they're looking very nice. And on the services side, during the week I run a heat treatment service for Bladesmiths, so I can do just about anything up to 900 mil long, 125 mil wide, Brilliant. and we make Damascus, uh, some of which you can see on the table in front of you. So yeah, Damascus, basic, basic billets for stock removal knife makers. Fantastic. Okay, so what have you going to show so far? Fully booked almost? And on the, on the uh, uh, courses side, yeah. we tend to be booked up about six to eight weeks ahead. Yeah. Um, it's dying off a little bit now, but that's understandable, but uh, it'll pick up again as we, we rush into Christmas. Uh, so yeah, no, that's good. The heat treatment side is always busy um, and he's actually getting busier at the moment. Damascus sales are steady. So yeah, people are still making knives, yeah. which is nice to know. And where I can, I even buy my steel in, well, I buy the steel in the UK, yeah. but I try to source British made steel. So I get, you know, the stuff that's being made out of Liberty in Sheffield. I'll try to use that as much as I can, to keep everything going here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, cheers. Yeah. Wow. Each artisan works within a range of styles, from outdoor knives, utility, hunting or chef knives, but their own expression within that niche is unique to them. Yeah, RWL 34, RWL 34, Damascus steel. Yeah. Is that mother of pearl inlay? Yeah, mother of pearl inlays. Titanium sides or? Yeah, everything is all titanium hardware. They have black Damascus in case of this one. Wow. Uh, Chad Nichols Damascus, stainless yeah. Damascus, zirconium bolsters. Mammoth Ivory. Mammoth. Yeah. Exactly the wow. same. RWL34. Fat carbon inlays. 18 uh, carat gold dots on the back spaces. Fantastic. Many thanks. Mm -hmm. What I like about this one? Yeah, yeah. I think when I, when I, actually, I basically went through four times until I was happy with it. Look, it looks like it's been used. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. That's it. I'm probably coming to the public side. It's coming to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. People use your knives a lot. I do, sir. Oh, yes. I've made one. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I told you. The first knife I made, he ground the blade. Right. This one? Oh yes, please. Uh, yeah, it's a just like a random pattern that yeah. I'd worked on this pattern for about two or three weeks, and this last billet was yeah. like the final version of it, if you like. You know, so I've right. been building up, doing different things, twisting it, stacking it, tiling it, just to, and then. It just came out in this one, and I was like, that's it. Yeah. But by the time I manipulated the billet, because you can change a pattern of a billet just the way you fold <laughs> it, yeah. 
So by the time the particular billet I was using, by the time I forged that billet to get the pattern, the billet was then too small to really do anything with. And uh, I showed the pattern to my mate and I said, look at that pattern, because it was only about that wide, the billet. And I said, I don't know what to do with it. It would only really make friction folders, but I'm not making them anymore, I hate them. So he says, make a nice dagger, though, wouldn't it? And I went, oh, it would. Because so yeah, that's that was my first dagger. So I made a dagger. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And then yeah, so I did the ebony handle with the sterling silver wire, uh, HC having two guard, uh, 52 100 ball on the end. And stainless fittings on, yeah, yeah no fullers. No full, the uh, lead roof, the lead no, thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a fuller, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's got some it feels beautiful, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's the finish on the guard as well. Yeah. It's dancing on the green guard, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I love, I love that hot blue finish, it's beautiful. Fantastic. Many thanks. Cheers, and of course you do so much of just the bags, don't you? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, the, like the Bowie mosaic and sand mines and wrought irons and feathers. Some stainless sun mines. Oh, 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 yeah. I don't know about any hermones in it. But that's one I finished this week. Yes. Yeah. With just a burl and black wire as a contrast wow. just to that one, you know, so yeah. just a complete contrast, aren't they? That's beautiful you, work. You can just see the the following in yeah. the blade on that, if you like the chitons in the in the pattern. Can you see it like yeah, this? Just, just yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 The pattern didn't come out how I wanted it, but it was too late. You, you could try and steer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah, was yeah. too late by that stage, you know, so I had, to, I had to go with it, you know, just to get it ready for the show. Because the display would not look right unless there was two daggers pointing in. My old CD would have gone crazy if I didn't have two daggers. So. Thank you. Thanks for telling us about your work. So, yeah. mate, no problem. Okay, Nina, the core with the KWD knives, if you could just introduce us to your work. Yeah, um, well, I specialise in chef knives now, uh, but I do make everything. Especially, I love the odd projects, um, swords, whatever. Um, but yeah, specialise in chef knives, particularly the integral San Mai chef knives. Right. Um, we've been forging the San Mai for a few years. It's about what are you using for your core? Uh, ATC CRV2, all carbon steel. Um, I'd like to do stainless. We've done a couple, but the black is more popular. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we do stainless clad, um, all sorts. Okay, and you stabilizing your own work? Yeah, all stabilized. Been doing that for years now. We also forge our own billets and sell uh, San Mai billets for sale and to masses. Brilliant. Uh, I know you said something very good, you like, Perfect one thing. Yeah. And then move on. Yeah. I, I got into this by doing everything. I want to do everything. Really and it's taken a very long time to perfect yeah. every aspect. Um, if anyone's looking to get into it, just choose something and focus on it until you've got that mastered. Yeah. And I started off with each points. Yeah. So Lee, so Rambo 4. Yep. Excellent. Fits and knives, the gradually gradually, the bushcraft, the yeah. wood roar and clone would go and strike yeah. up. Um, Very good. But I'm, st I'm still doing the MOD knives, mm -hmm. sharpening, doing them up. The Golos got my own model. Yeah. So basically, the knife you would get that the army guy would have that you wish was better. So yeah. I perfect that. Excellent. Yeah. And then I come up with my own model. Mm -hmm. So you've obviously, with a chef knife, you're you're into a very specific niche. Yeah. And when you hold a chef's knife, you know whether that's working or not, even without cutting. Yeah. So thin yeah. stock, you know, does it, does it rock well? Exactly. Yeah. Well, like I said, I started off doing them all, and then I started doing cutthroat razors. And that's when I really started perfecting You're doing all of ones now. It's totally different, yeah. Yeah, I realised there's a lot more to learn. So you have to focus on it and yeah. get one thing right before you do everything. And like I said, now I'm doing chef knives. And yeah. like you say, there's a lot to that. So. Um, as I say, if you were doing razors, sand mine, 
you'd have too much core in your mouth being shown, wouldn't you? Yeah, you need a thin core for yeah. uh, razors. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll show you work as much as I can. Oh, brilliant, thank get you. Get yeah. some coverage. You're on Instagram, are you? Instagram. Everything? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just great. Excellent. Yeah, I'll you give you a follow. Me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, glad to meet Adam. That's me. Knives. If you want to Indeed. explain your work and what you got into the knives. Yeah, so um, I'm an ex-chef and hospitality staff okay, member. You have a need for a good knife there. Don't indeed, you? indeed. Uh, and I just, I kind of fell into the love of watching videos online and seeing people make content about knife making. Yes. Um, and then there's a gentleman called Ben Edmonds who owns and runs Block Knives. Yes. And I, I have a couple of his. Yeah. And I contacted him one day and said, I've got a couple of weeks to have a holiday from work. Okay. And I'm the thinking. wife isn't going to be particularly pleased about this, but can I just come and see you and see what you do? I make a mean cup of yeah. tea. Um, he essentially said, yeah, cool, no worries. I went and worked with him and that was me sold instantly. Yeah. Um, and then during COVID... Yeah, yeah. So during COVID, uh, my w wife and I moved from London to Folkestone on the coast. And then once we got to the coast, it was just, let's roll the dice and see how it goes. So, and since then, that's what I've been doing. You literally threw yeah, the dice off we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. That's a plunge. Absolutely. That's I mean, it was, I was very lucky to meet Corbin <laughs> from KWB, yeah. um, who we now share the workshop. Um, and I mean, this is all he's done, and he's an fa absolute fountain of knowledge. Um, and you know, we have a really good dynamic of bouncing off one another and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And you know, the fact that he's constantly pushing the envelope yeah. gets me to constantly push, push the envelope. Yeah, it works in so many areas. Absolutely, yeah. and I mean, it's amazing because it, you, you can tell that he's done it for such a long period of time. But had it not have been me working alongside him as well. I wouldn't have developed as quickly no. as what I have done. Um, oh, whereas brilliant. now, brilliant. two years in, I'm a really confident knife maker and I'm happy to come to a show and sure. promote my own stuff. Fantastic. You know? And we've you know, uh, made stuff for, like there's a two mission style restaurant in London called Kitchen Table. Uh, all of their tableware, we made. But you were which is, so, yeah, 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 there's the front, there's the back um, door at least. Yeah. We've actually got a couple of the guys, a couple of mission chefs turning up later on today uh, that are coming to have a browse with their pocket money. So hopefully they'll take a couple with them and uh, then we'll see them being put to good use. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll share this as much as I can. Thank you. Get as much coverage as we can. Amazing. Well, it's beautiful work. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you for your time. You. Pleasure. Chef. <laughs> right, nice, uh, made knives. Yeah, so let's talk about your work, sir, your folders, your fixed, and to camera and just let me know what you're all about. Brilliant. Well, good to see you again Indeed. first. It's been, it's been a, a few while, years. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, as you can see, I do a range of different types of knife, specialising in, in uh, EDC pocket friendly carry yeah. friction folders. Um, a different range of them. You've got Standard, Tanto, Quaken, and the Goliath. Yeah. And the Goliath always raises a smile because yeah. people can't believe that it's a uh, UK friendly carry for the yeah. size of it. Um, also a range of bushcraft tools from standard typical bushcraft knives, belt knives, more camp style. Yeah. And then a range of neck knives as well, um, which are generally more as a companion knife to a bushcraft knife. But yeah. I'm not going to teach you this because it's your area of expertise as well. Ones, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then kitchen knives as well, which is something that I've only been doing it for about two years now, but yeah. I've very much fallen in love with a, the kitchen. Was anchoring to start, or are you out of use at home and you thought... Oh, yeah, I, it's, I, I like making the knives that I know how to use myself. Right. So, yeah. I've got a history of bushcraft instruction. I talked with a bushcraft magazine for years, hence the bushcraft series yeah. and the folders, which kind of just fall into that same everyday carry as well. Um, but both myself and the wife really enjoy cooking. and. Um, yeah, yeah so it was kind of well. yeah. yeah. So it's it's been really good fun developing the range. I do anything from eight-inch K tips, Nakiri vegetable knives, petty knives, and then these with the wire handles. You've got one here. Yep. You've got a hundred-layer Damascus either side. San Mai with an 80 CRV2 core, so you're just sharpening the single steel just, in the middle, the middle which bit, I yeah. like. Yeah. yeah, and the bit I love is the availability of kind of handle materials that we've got now. Because yeah. if you, if you go back. Ten years ago, when I ten did years it. ago, yeah. normal wood, 
you could get stabilised wood, but you pay through the nose for it, and you could get the 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 dull coloured mark my carters basically, yeah, couldn't you? Tough way or something yeah, like that. Yeah, an olive drab and black, and that was probably about all you could get. And even down to the liners. I mean, I used to use the vulcanised fibre back yeah. in the days, but the G10 now you can get in every colour of the rainbow, yeah, and it, can. it's just. I like the bright colours. I like something yeah. that stands out. If you drop it, you can see it. But yeah. I think people like the brightness as well. Some people like the more subdued type stuff. But you can yeah. always just buzz it up a little with an orange liner, can't you? Absolutely. Like yeah, yeah. Like, like, like this one. Yeah. So the desert ironwood here got a nice, nice bright orange liner behind it. But fantastic. Yeah. And you're on Instagram, aren't you? I am. Oh, Self-made cool. knives on Instagram, or you can find me on the web at www.selfmadeknives.co.uk. And yeah, I've got a newest toy in the workshop is a fibre laser etcher, so yeah, I'm now doing uh, merch for other people as well. So things like the bottle openers, challenge coins, or if people want their, their blades yeah. etched. Um, noisy little things, aren't they? Noisy, yeah. smelly, yeah. but bloody good fun. Yeah, yeah. A bit like yourself, mate. Nice you. <laughs> Take Good care, Scott. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Brilliant. Where can I find this, these photos in the footage? Right, Wessex Blades. Wessex Blades? Yeah. I've heard of you. Oh dear. <laughs> the word's out. Yeah, I, all I do is, because I'll never be able to fill a table, that's, I'm just not prolific enough. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I come here and just share as much as I can. I try and get to every table at least, um, so I can do. Because I mean, when, when I first started, you might be able to buy some O1 tool steel from Cromwell's. And if you knew the people in Birmingham or Sheffield, you might be able to get the steel. But now, I mean, you've got Grand Flat Stock, you've got UK Knife Maker Supplies. You know, I tried to start 10, 15 years ago, and I was in the same situation, gave up yeah. so a year ago, got back into it. I was literally ripping the bottom of Hiluxes out for leaf springs, yeah. when I was making Rambo 4s. I mean, that's how I started. Um, so I'm ang angle grinding that down, and needling it back, taking the scale off, giving myself a piece that big, and then I was forge shaping it, yeah, yeah, yeah. or I was just literally orc cleavering, Rhodius discs, just cutting it up. Yeah, um, get any of those fancy KMG grinders like the American. No KMGs. Both my grinders I've got now are still handmade. Yeah. Because it was Wait. it was before Alistair was there with Downland. Before you could get a multi-tool, before you could get a Manchester. You know, way, way, way back was when I started. And That's so much choice there. Yeah. And handle materials as well. I mean you can import yeah. it and value it. But yeah, as much as I can, I'll, I'll share it. And Thank you so much. Yeah, worth a shot. Okay, me and up with Tom, Bullet Brothers Knives. Uh, How you doing? If you could talk us through your work, your inspirations. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I mainly make folding knives. Um, I love folding knives, friction folders, slip joints, that kind of thing. Um, I'm massively inspired by French and Spanish knives, and I try and show that in some of my work. Yeah. Um, this is my most recent one. It is a rainbow Damascus and brass cracked friction folder. Beautiful. Um, it comes with a matching pry bar as well, which is in the cabinet down there. And is, I'm honoured to hold it because it's already pre-sold, isn't it? Yep. So you're very privileged to see that, but I'm sure my customer will not mind. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Razor sharp, yes. scalpel thin, the way every knife should be. That feels so dense in that as well. That solid brass. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. So, how long have you been making knives? Um, on and off for about 10, 15 years, um, but not full time. Only full time for the past year, and that's when I started selling. Um, so, I've only been sort of on the scene, as it were, for about a year. Um, but yeah, ever since I was a kid in my granddad's shed hammering and forging out bits of nails Fantastic. with him to turn into little sharp objects that... And you are on Instagram? On Instagram, at Bullet Brothers Knives. At Bullet Brothers Knives. Um, also, find us on Facebook as well, um, which is also Bullet Brothers Knives. Well, so we get some traction in the next couple of weeks. Thank Good you time. very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers. Hey, hey, no worries, man. Yeah, give us a shout. Hey. Right. Sharp Show 2022. Hello, Ben. Hey, I'm Scott. How are you doing? You all right? Um, I'm going to talk about your 
History, basically, you know, a new venue, so anybody may not have come across you. Yeah. What got you into it? I mean, what? we know green woodworking, but what yeah. got you into knife making? What got me into knife making? You know, like you say, I started off leaving school, getting an apprenticeship in green woodworking. A lot of those kind of traditional crafts, a lot of the tools weren't readily available. Yeah. Or you could only buy second-hand rusty ones from car boot choice. sales. Yeah. So after a while of sort of trying to restore lots of old rusty stuff, I thought, hang on a minute, I'm spending hours doing this. Why don't I bespoke the tool to my yes. needs? So started off using lots of recycled steel, old saw blades, old files, uh, and then finally got into making stuff out of proper tool steel. So strip of ground flat stock, bit of O1 tool steel. Started making me a first knives from that. And really, before it was fixed blades, it was mostly the sort of spoon carving tools. So yeah. where I first started was making stuff so that I could whittle a spoon. You know, I was dead keen on yeah. green woodworking and carving spoons has always been sort of close to my heart. Very accessible kind of woodcraft. So started off making spoon knives. Yeah. And then obviously, through the years, my it's sort of range has grown. <laughs> to, it's almost a bit crazy now, really, yeah. the kind of things we end up making. Um, but obviously, I, I end up making the, the knives, and then my wife Lois does all the leather work. Yeah. So it's like a little cottage industry, really. It's kind of yeah. nice to be able to be in a little workshop. I'm downstairs, Lois is upstairs doing all the leather work and keeping keeping the business running, really. Certainly. And you've got to show me this new, um, this new grind that you're doing. Yeah, so obviously we've got a lot of popular sort of designs of fixed blades and stuff. I'm mostly known for a Scandi grind because obviously my, my woodcraft background. Yeah. Um, but because we're getting a lot of dudes now that want a bushcraft knife, but they also want to do a lot more food preparation and things like that. It's too abrupt to go. Exactly. That, the Scandi grind is great for woodcraft, very strong edge, but obviously you've got quite an obtuse angle when it comes to, we were just joking yeah, there, yeah. weren't we? Cutting carrots. They pop away. Yeah. <laughs> so what we've started to offer is a full flat grind on all our knives. So this is one of our Nomad knives. This is one of our popular UK legal EDCs, yeah. uh, sub three inches, so you can have it with you at all times, really. Mostly we do the Scandi grind on it. So we've got our Scandi ground version, yes. and then we've got our full flat ground version as well. So a bit more universal, great for like farmers that are opening bales of hay or yeah, yeah. food sacks, but also anybody that wants to do sort of food, food preparation yeah. when they're on the trail. Um, this one's actually in ABL stainless steel that we offer on all our tools. Yeah. But with that full flat ground blade profile. More for culinary. Fantastic, and yeah. And really. etch on it as well for protection. Yeah. yeah you even though it's ABL. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I tend to put an acid stone wash on it. I don't know why, I've sort of fallen in love with it. Um, but we could do polished finishes as well if people yeah. want, really. But yeah, that's, that's kind of fun, kind of exciting. So you can kind of mix up the knife designs that we do, choose the grind that you want. Uh, choose the handle material, choose the steel to get the perfect knife just for your needs, for really. Your needs. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, nothing but success forever in the future. Well, right nice then. one, Scott. Always nice chatting to you, mate. Pleasure. Take Thank care. You. Ta right. for now. Hey, g'day. I'm Toby from UK Knife Make Supplies. We uh, stock pretty much anything you might need for knife making. A one-stop shop from handle material to steels, Corby bolts, lots of bits and bobs. If there's anything you do want, please let me know and I'll see if I can get it for you. I came to this show because I'm a sucker for a knife show and uh, this one's been amazing. I thought about traveling to France because there was none this year and then this one popped up out of the blue and it hasn't let down. So many cool people. I'm not even sure I've seen anything and I've been here all day. I thought I might be in and out, but it's taken up all this time and there's so many cool people who I'm so grateful for them running it. Uh, make sure you're at next time, next knife show you see because the community is worth hanging out with. Thanks, guys. Okay, so we're here today with Doc Price, and uh, you've been making knives for a very long time. Yeah. I, start, I started in 1944. Whoa. Yeah. 80 years ago? More than 80 yeah, years, years ago. ago. Well, very well, I, I, I get my, my mother's kitchen knives and convert them into Bowie knives. I think that's where we all start, yeah. Convert it into something else. Yeah, yeah. so it was... Um, uh, Tarzan films and, and Johnny Boy's mother, yeah. The, and his, the, yeah. The, uh, Umgawa, uh, Umgawa. That was, that was his African speak. Yeah. So I was looking at your um, your level work with this crocodile here. Where yeah. did it go? Yeah, there it was. And we're on about the uh, 
like the scoops on the top, with almost an armour, and that yeah. just protect the knife. What better than a crocodile skin? Absolutely. Yeah. But they're very rare. But this is sophistication. This is two different skins laminated and brought together for a handbag, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah. So when I go around the auction rooms in days gone by, I would always be looking for handbags. And, and repurposing them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I just love them because they're, they're original skins. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're not fake. And you're saying yeah. these are your apprentice? Yeah, yeah. You yeah that's my nicer. apprentices bro. Yeah. He goes around the shop cleaning up all the stuff that I don't want to use. Yeah. And yeah. This, is, this is one of yours, so this one? Yeah, here, that's, yeah, okay, that's, uh, so This one here. Yeah, I, I refer that to as a German hanger. Yeah. When they went boar hunting, they'd have a short sword like that, very broad, very quick, and a, and a, and a six or seven foot spear. They stand like that, and they take a knife out and cut his heart out so he And then dead. for dispatching, they'd use... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, showing, it's, it's not a plain blade, this is actually... Laminated. It's laminated. It's laminated it's center, center hardcore and then the laminate is the artificial. So it's a Samoy Damascus? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Beautiful piece of work. Yeah. Well, let's hope we can get some, some share some love for your work. But beautiful yeah. knives, beautiful leather work. Yeah. And, uh, this, is, this has been like medieval pattern. That was there's there's no metal at all used on it. No stitching. It's all in, interlocking leather. If you look at this, it. yeah. So this is copy of a medieval yeah. scabbard, and that's no no metal work. Just the interlocking of the various shapes of the, the leather. Shapes all see. combined. Into yeah. And then hardened and then yeah. allowed to. Set so it's like a composite of different levers together. Yeah. 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 So and then at the back, yeah. a European sort of Nordic theory yeah. of stitching them at the back. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I hope I'm still making knives when I'm your age, sir, because that's. Well, there's no reason one shouldn't because it's that's a joy. Fantastic. It's it's a, just a, an expression of uh, of creation. The, yeah. I mean, you can use a thing, and you can make a thing. They can't kind of get a better combination than that. No. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. There really was so much here. We were lucky to get the footage we did. So you're more than welcome to leave a link to your footage or your experience below in the comment section. This will get more promotion for another event in the future. Yeah. 
have one of your twenty pounds. Yeah, it does. Especially if resale value as well. If you're a well-known maker. Yeah. 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 Um, well-known maker. There's a guy at the minute, a Brazilian maker. He did George, and he ain't got a huge name. But he makes stunning domestic. But I suppose really he maybe he's like an up and coming yeah, kind yeah. of one, so eventually yeah. he'll be a big Yeah, name. eventually he'll be coming up and get an up in price, but at the minute you can get his nice, really good price. Beautiful integral damascus, both like $1,000, which is ridiculously cheap. Yeah, it is. Name's a big thing. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. It's like anything, though clothes, cars. Yeah. 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 Yep. I heard that saying before. Oh, it's like, like you know, when, when a kid gets all excited and oh, they start yeah. crying and all that because they're tired. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll take them. So please do leave a comment, uh, links to your own social media, the footage that you've got of the show. Let's make this as successful as we can for next year. Rather than try and replicate the piece that's missing. Yeah. Oh, with the chisel grain and. Oh, 
Dutch Bay. Yeah, uh, the, there's the carbon fiber. I've got one like the reserved. Yes, that's it. Special mention for Tiffers here. She's the event organizer. Please do check out her Instagram. The Sharp Show, I'll leave a link below. And just, I mean, these were, these are from Spain from a similar period, and you can see that there, there's probably a very slight hollow grind on them, but nowhere near as dramatic as the Middle Eastern ones. And that is partly to the advantage of doing them that way, is that um, you can actually you change the weight and balance of them. So, these will take, when I first started, before I got the hang of I'd be assembling and taking the parts literally up to a hundred times here. So please do feel free to leave a comment below wherever you purchased the knife, how you enjoyed the day, or a link to your own footage of the knife show. If you attended, give it a like. If you missed it this year, make sure you purchase your tickets online at the Sharp Show website for next year. And you can meet up with old friends, new friends, or if you're really lucky, you can be an absolute legend. Thank you so much for watching. Nice experience. There's no reason one shouldn't, because it's That's a joy. It's, it's, it's just a, an expression of, uh, of creation. That, yes. I mean, you can use a thing, and you can make a thing. They, you can't get a better combination than that. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you, so much. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.